Some of the best horror films come from a simple premise executed flawlessly. An escaped mental patient. The exorcism of a possessed child. Killer birds. Fast zombies. Getting lost in the woods. The concept for the 2010 horror thriller Frozen came from the mind of writer-director Adam Green. The idea was fairly simple. Three students trapped on a ski lift and no one knows they're there. I know I say this fairly often, but before I go any further, if you haven't seen this movie, I give this my highest recommendation. You seriously need to see the movie first before watching the video. It's one of the best horror films in the past 10 years. After graduating college in the 90s, Green got a job working at Time Warner Cable Advertising in Boston. He was paired with Will Barrett and the two shot commercials and B-roll footage for the company. After working together for some time, Green asked Barrett, You don't want to do this forever, do you? Shortly thereafter, using their own money and the gear from their day job, they shot the micro-budgeted Coffee and Donuts in 2000. After that, they began gathering producers and in 2006 released the horror comedy Hatchet. His production company, Ariscope Pictures, which he co-founded with Barrett and Corey Neal, was gearing up for their third movie, Spiral. After Spiral, Green started thinking of ideas for the next film. While this was going on, he signed up to produce the bizarre horror drama, Grace. One morning, Green was watching the news. They ran the weather forecast, and the background image was chairlifts at a ski resort. He was reminded of how much he used to ski when he was younger, and how scary it was to be on the chairlift due to his fear of heights. He grew up on the East Coast, and the mountains where he used to ski were only open on weekends. It was entirely plausible that someone could be unknowingly left up there on a Sunday with no one to save them until the following Friday. He contacted his friend Craig Borden, who loved the idea. Initially, they thought they could self-finance the picture. It's just three people in a chair. How hard could it be? After some time looking at the logistics and insisting the entire thing be done practically, they decided it was beyond the scope that they could afford and would need some additional financing. Green wanted to work on the script, but had to head out to Canada to produce Grace. While he was on set every day, the times when he wasn't needed, he was off writing the script for what would become Frozen. By the end of the shoot, he had a solid first draft. He contacted Peter Block, a producer he had worked with previously. Block had just left Lionsgate to form the production company, A Bigger Boat. Block loved the idea and wanted to fast-track the film to get it in production soon. In October of 2008 was when A Bigger Boat signed on to produce, and by December, they were already location scouting. When casting, Green insisted they go with, as he put it, Terrific actors, not terrific names. He was more interested in getting a stellar performance than getting a better-known actor attached. For the main cast, they needed two guys and a girl. The first person to audition was Emma Bell. She was so good, they said she set the bar, and after weeks of auditions, no one else came close. Green knew actor Kevin Zeggers, who read for the part of Dan. While Zeggers was not largely known, he was a very established actor who's been working in the industry since 1992. They hired Zeggers, who suggested they take an audition from Sean Ashmore. Ashmore and Zeggers had been friends for years, so when they did chemistry reads, the two acted naturally. Green knew in order for the film to work, it had to be done practically. That meant no sets, no green screens, just three actors 50 feet in the air on a ski lift. They went to Utah and checked out various lifts and various mountains, but none of them felt right. Green would ride the lifts and at different parts thought, could I jump from here? None of them were quite perilous enough. Finally, he was on a lift with Will Barrett on Snow Basin Mountain in Huntsville, Utah. The lift was one from the 70s that was no longer in use. While going up the mountain, they reached a certain precarious point, and Green said, This is where they died. At that moment, the lift stopped moving. They were freaked out. The spot was a treacherous 50-foot drop, and they didn't tell anyone to stop the lift. After a few minutes, it started moving again, and they made it to the bottom of the mountain. They spoke to one of the employees who informed them that some time ago, a guy committed suicide on the lift, and the spot they stopped was the spot he died. He even showed them the chair with the bullet hole in it. They knew they had their location. Pre-production continued in January of 2009. They moved the giant crane they needed to hold the camera up the mountain. They built platforms for the equipment, as well as a base for the crane. They brought dozens of trees up to help conceal the equipment. This was incredibly time-consuming, because they had to lug all of this equipment a quarter mile up the mountain. To get specific shots of the cast, they had to build something. They took a work bucket, mounted cameras on it, and locked it in front of the chair. The thing didn't look safe, and the cameramen refused to get on it. Since someone else would do it, Green and Barron had to man the work bucket. Before filming, Green made a pack with the cast. Since they'd be up in the chair for hours with no food, water, or bathroom breaks, he'd do the same in solidarity. To keep the rising tension, they shot the film chronologically. The first day of filming, it started raining. They did their best to mask it out with camera angles, but you can still see it in some shots. When the trio rode up the mountain, they'd record them non-stop. When they got to a certain point, they'd have to reset, 
and that meant letting the chair continue on its track going back down to the ground. The process took about 45 minutes, so they had to come up with movie trivia and other things to pass the time. It was genuinely cold up there, so the cast had numerous layers of thermal bodysuits and other things to keep them warm. To get their audio, they had a boom mic attached to the top of the chair, and each of them had a mic hidden in their hats. To let the audience know the film was taking place in New England, they frequently showed the Newberry Comics sign. Like all of Green's movies, Frozen was loaded with references, cameos, and in-jokes. They called the mountain Mount Holliston, which was a fictional mountain named after Holliston, the town where Green grew up. The three leads were named after his friends. Ashmore was Joe Lynch, named after the director Joe Lynch. Zeggers was Dan Walker, after spooky Dan Walker. And Emma Bell was Parker O'Neill, after director Dave Parker. The missing poster was a dig at B.J. McDonnell, his Steadicam operator. He couldn't make it to the shoot because at the time, he was working on Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. A Christmas Story and Star Wars are two of the director's favorite movies, so he tries to squeeze references to them in every film. That's easy. Sarlacc pit. Every year, Adam Green and Joe Lynch would do a short film as the Douche Brothers, called The Road to Fright Fest, a huge annual film festival that focused on horror. Each short was a spoof on a famous horror scene. In the movie, two of the pissed-off skiers are Green and Lynch as an homage to the Douche Brothers. The girl Joe's interested in is Rylea Vanderbilt, Green's fiance. They were married after filming, but divorced in 2014. And that's Will Barrett in a cameo. Kane Hodder was the stunt coordinator, as well as the guy driving the snowcat. The guy in the Twisted Sister shirt was Schneiderman, the production assistant. His real name's Cody Blue Schneider, the son of rock legend D. Schneider. Speaking of which, D. Schneider's the voice of the guy who says... Joel David Moore, who Green worked with on Hatchet, was the voice telling Hodder to come in. Come back to base so we can get the hell out of here. Green came up with the idea of including the wolves after reading an article about a wolf pack that tracked a lost couple at a ski resort. Sled Reynolds was the wolf trainer, one of the best animal handlers in the business. He's worked on everything from the Ghost in the Darkness to Dances with Wolves. He trained each of the actors and crew on how to work around the wolves. Even though they were either behind an electric fence or on leashes, they weren't taking any chances. When Dan gets killed for the shots where the wolves are all over him, it was one of the trainers. He had food in his jacket, which is why they were all over him. Zeggers wanted to do a scene with the wolves, which is the one where the four were circling him. One broke rank and moved in way too close to the actor, so the trainers had to jump in to stop him. A few frames of this made it into the film. Filming on the mountain was brutal. They were shooting at 8,000 feet, so some of them suffered from altitude sickness. The exposed skin of the cast and crew was either windburnt or sunburnt. Green said his eyeballs got sunburnt. After a miserable five-week shoot, mostly through March of 2009, the film wrapped. For the cast and crew, even though it was a rough shoot, they were still sad it was over. After post-production, the film had a Secret World premiere at the Ain't It Cool News But Numathon event in December of 2009. An audience member fainted when Dan jumped out of the chair and broke his legs. The film continued the festival circuit, and it seemed like at every showing, someone either passed out or threw up. At Sundance, there were lines around the block and numerous sold-out showings. At one of the Q&As after the film, Green told the story of the chair stopping where the guy killed himself. A woman in the audience knew the guy who died and confirmed it was real. Despite the buzz around the film, it had a very small theatrical release in the U.S. The movie fared well with most critics, but Green was angry with some for giving it a bad review over nitpicks. One critic gave the movie a bad review because he said the movie was good, but the awful CGI wolves ruined it despite the fact that the wolves were indeed real. Bloggers mocked the film, saying Iceman should have just made an ice bridge for them to climb down. Others bashed the film about how easy it would be to get down from there. Green stressed how he investigated and spoke to various people who work there about the perils of the chairlifts, how dropping 50 feet onto packed snow is like falling on concrete. As far as climbing the cable, even though it looks like rope, it is in fact incredibly sharp. Even though he had special gloves made, the stuntman who climbed the cable still had it cut through. For the people who said they should slide down using their clothes, Mythbusters did an episode proving that wasn't possible. Using your clothing to escape a ski lift? Bad idea. Either the clothing is going to rip, or your arms are going to give out. So zipline jeans escape. Busted. 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 One critic wrote a lengthy negative review about how something like this could never happen. Two weeks after the movie was released, the exact thing happened. Only in this case, a snowcat driver saw the guy setting his money on fire in the hopes of getting someone's attention. The critic deleted his review, but never apologized. A few critics complained about the fact that they never brought their cell phones. If you watch the film, they explain they left their phones in their lockers. Actually, why don't you give me the key, and I'll go check my messages and... Not to the locker, no. You're gonna come sit down for a sec. Come here. 
all you're gonna get is a bunch of messages from your mom complaining about this, complaining about that. It's just, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not gonna give you the key. If you ask any skier or snowboarder, they tell you they leave their cell phones behind because they're too easy to break or lose on the mountain. Besides, there's no signal on the mountain anyway, so it's useless. Things may be different now in 2016, but keep in mind how much cell phone technology has advanced since 2009. While the movie was not a theatrical hit, it was very popular on cable and DVD. Green continued writing, directing, and producing, and is considered one of the best horror directors today. His first movie, Coffee and Donuts, was expanded into the series Holliston, which is getting ready to start his third season. He also co-hosts the Movie Crypt podcast with the awesome Joe Lynch. If you're into horror or want a better understanding of the inner workings of movie making, this is a must-listen. Frozen is a devastating film. It goes to show just how quickly things can go from lighthearted fun to complete disaster. It also reminds us just how fragile and vulnerable we are to nature. Green's writing, directing, and inventiveness really shine through. Having a movie that's essentially one location the entire film is very tricky to pull off. All three of the actors gave outstanding performances. With the acting being on location rather than a set, it greatly helped with their performance and really made it feel like they were going through this horrific ordeal. As for all the nitpicks, people make mistakes when they're in dire situations. Some kids from the suburbs don't instantly become survival experts overnight. While the horror fans have seen the film for the excellence that it is, part of me is irritated by the bullshit reasons people came up with to bash the film. Green said if he could, he'd create a reality show called Shit Talkers, where he'd take all the people who nitpicked the movie and put them in the exact same situation. If they got out, they'd win $100,000. Most would probably piss their pants, and the rest would die stupidly. Sean uh, yeah, said he could not take yeah, yeah. any more. For sure. And I don't, I'm and not going to be up now. We brought in a puppet dog for him to fight because the Border Collie was just kicking his ass. <laughs> <laughs>